We live anywhere. In a tent, under a shade tree, under a river bridge. We drink water out of a creek or anywhere we can get it. Five or six families drink out of one cup, a tin can, or anything else. We're to blame. We tolerate that stuff. If we stick together and say we won't do it, we won't pick your chairs until you give us some uh, restrooms in the field for the ladies, and some for the men, and some water fit to drink, we won't pick them. We'd get them. Chairman of the Subcommittee on Migratory Labor was asked if state or federal legislation was the answer. Many aspects can only be successfully uh, dealt with at a national level. For example, wages. Uh, we, we can't, uh, we, we see states in competitive positions. They're re reluctant to raise wages uh, through legislation in their state because their farmers are uh, competing with uh, farmers in other states. And we see in education uh, some states who have taken great strides. We can't expect states to do it alone. Uh, when they know their neighboring state with whom their farmers compete are not doing anything. Uh, we we uh, know that uh, just about everybody in this country has some federal support for adequate housing through FHA or whatever the program is, except uh, the farm community. And the migrant farmer is the most poorly housed member of our society. You make about five or ten dollars today and tomorrow you just are looking for a job and stay on the street. Looking for a job, no, my, you don't got no job to, uh, another day. If I do the local people, what's to do? Sure, you can get a job, but if you can't live on what you make, what good is the job? What do you think are the differences between the races? I think there's a refusal to accept responsibility. I think there's a lack of motivation. I've tried here to promote people to foremen, superintendents, but they just refuse to do it. They just don't want the responsibility. They don't worry like the, the white man. If they have troubles, they go to sleep and wake up the next morning that trouble is over. Everyone who knows anything about this situation agrees that the best hope for the future of the migrants lies in the education of their children. But for the children of migrants, education is not easy to come by. There are 600,000 of them. Most state child labor laws ignore farm children. And so far as the children of migrants are concerned, almost without exception, they leave school at the age of 16 forever. The United States Office of Education reports that the migratory workers have the highest rate of illiteracy in the country. And there is no case upon the record of the child of a migrant laborer ever receiving a college diploma. Only six states have summer schools for migrants. The New Jersey School Center is at Cranberry. Laura, how old are you? Eleven. Eleven? What grade are you in? In the sixth. Sixth grade. Uh, do you intend to go to high school, Laura? Yes. Yeah. What would you like to be? I would like to be a teacher. What would you like to teach? Uh, about, I like to teach the fifth grade. What do you think about going to school here in Cranberry, New Jersey, Harriet? I like it. I like it. Well, good. Would you, uh, do you have any idea what you want to do when you grow up? Be a teacher. Well, good. How old are you, Patricia? Eight. What Nine. grade are you? Nine? <laughs> what grade are you in? Four. Do you uh, have any idea what you want to be uh, when you grow up? Yeah. What's that? A nurse. Otis, what would you like to do when you grow up? Be a doctor. Going to be a doctor? Yes. What kind of a doctor do you know? I think I'd rather be a dentist. A dentist? Teeth. Is it possible that white people have something to do with the lack of ability for blacks to assimilate into this culture? Absolutely. Uh, the white man has certainly been prejudiced and to quite an extent unfair. But customs die awful hard. It takes, takes a long time. And everyone knew years ago that the Negro would have to be given equality. 
But in the South, knowing Negroes as we think we do, we realize it would take time. It's, uh, it's been compared to, to straightening teeth. It takes a slow, steady pressure. You can't do it with a hammer. And, and white people's attitudes will change in time. I'm a lot more liberal than I was five years ago, and I know I'll be a lot more liberal five years from now, and I think almost everyone else is in that category. Mr. Shack, how does this problem affect you personally? I think maybe I feel a bit of responsibility toward these children because I realize that we here in New Jersey reap the benefits of their parents' labor and the children are suffering because their parents are here doing this. I saw one bright little girl. Her name was Laura Weeks. Will she really have a chance to continue her education? Laura is from a rural area in Florida and she is from an exceedingly large family. In fact, I believe there are eight or nine girls, all girls in the family. They have been coming to New Jersey now for about three or four years, to my knowledge. Laura is one of my returning pupils. I've seen great progress from year to year in Laura. We've had her for three sessions. However, I think because of the family's financial conditions and the size of the family and the fact that she is in a rural area that she probably will get no farther than upper junior high school or maybe complete high school with luck. What about Harriet Damon? Harriet, too, is from a very large family. There are nine children in the Damon family. We have six of them here in the summer program. She is the oldest of the nine. I doubt seriously that Harriet will have an opportunity to advance her education. One can't help but have compassion for those who find themselves in such a condition. <laughs> 